Okay, this is actually one of my favorite problems on the test because it's got a really cool slick solution. This time I think I did find the most efficient solution. Let's see what it is. Fall 2021 AMC 10B problem 21, also the 12B problem 19. Regular polygons with five, six, seven, and eight sides are inscribed in the same circle. No two of the polygons share a vertex and no three of their sides intersect at a common point. Okay, so this process, because it has a lot of information, let's just kind of try to draw something. This is what I did to kind of build my solution method. So first I drew the hexagon, mostly because, um, yeah, I'm a little bit better at drawing those typically than other shapes. Okay, something like this. There's your regular hexagon inside of the circle. And I thought, okay, well, wait a minute. It says five, six, seven, and eight. Let's just write this one here. We've got the five-sided, six-sided, seven-sided, eight-sided. No two share a vertex. So I don't have to worry about the vertex of this resting on here. That's impossible. And no three of their sides intersect at a common point. At how many points inside the circle do two of their sides intersect? Okay, so what I thought was, well, but where does the Pentagon go? Would I start it in the middle? Should I start it right here? How do I know where to place it? And I thought, man, there's so many different, infinite different configurations. The fact that I don't know where to put it has to mean something. It has to mean that it doesn't matter. There must be a solution that doesn't take that into consideration. So I tried to think a little bit more abstract. Let's just place it at a random place, okay, and just draw, try to draw five sides. One, two, three, I don't know, four, and then five. Okay, this might not be accurate for regular or whatnot. I don't really care. Let's try to observe what we can see here. I can see that at this vertex of the pentagon, I'm hitting a side of the hexagon twice. Does that happen here? Yes. Does it happen here? Yes. Does it happen here? Yes. Does it happen? It happens at every vertex of the pentagon. Is that always going to happen? But what about for the hexagon? It's not true for the hexagon. I've got two sides here. Is it really true that I could possibly have that? Well, I'm going to have to because this has only got five vertices and that's got six. It makes sense that somewhere on the circle, two of the hexagon vertices will occur in a row before you see another pentagon. Can we confirm that in a different way? Well, we could, let's see. So if you think about what is the arc degree measure cut by these equal arcs? Well, 360 divided by six, your arcs are going to be 60 degrees. These will be 72, 360 over seven, 350 would be seven times 50. And then you got one to 357 and then three extra. So it would be like 51 and 3 sevenths degrees. And then when you divide by eight, you should know that's 45 degrees from your trig. So think about it. If, if you traveled 60 degree arc, it's possible that the Pentagon would have to go hit here, go more than the 60 degrees necessary to a full 72 and then not have a vertex crossing there. But the reverse is not true. I could never have two consecutive pentagon vertices that don't have a hexagon vertex in between them. Why? Because I've got to go 72 degrees here. There's no way there's not going to be, uh, you know, every 60 degrees is going to be a vertex. There's no way I could go 72 and not have a hexagon vertex. So then that would mean that, yeah, I cannot get two pentagon ones in a row. So maybe I could think about this way. The pentagon's going to have to hit the hexagon twice for each vertex the pentagon has. That would give it 10. Would the same reasoning be true for the septagon or heptagon, depending on which system you use? Um, does it say that here? Five, six, seven, they don't even tell you, but yeah, the septagon would have to have the same thing happened because it's only got this gap. So I could never have two consecutive vertices of the Pentagon that don't hit at least one side. 
Now again, the reverse might not be true, but I don't need to worry about it. I don't have to worry about where the six-sided polygon hits the five-sided. If I just think about where the five-sided hits the six-sided, that's gonna give it to me. And the same thing will be true here as with here as it, as it was with here. So every pentagon vertex, right? Follow along, every pentagon vertex is gonna have one, two points of intersection. It's gonna cross over a side of the hexagon. The same thing is true of the septagon. The same thing is true of the octagon. Think about why this is again. So you're going to get 10 plus 10 plus 10. You're going to get 30 points of intersection that just involve the pentagon with these three. Okay? I don't need to worry about going the other way. Those are already accounted for. Like, for example, if the pentagon's intercepting the hexagon, then the hexagon's also into It's only one point, right? And we don't have to worry about... Um, no three of their sides intersect at a common point. I don't have to worry about that. All of these points of intersection are unique. Okay, now that we understand how that works, we should see how it's going to fall apart now. The same thing is going to happen when you go to the six-sided. All of its vertices will intersect a side of the septagon twice. Okay, now it might not hit every side, just like this side of the hexagon is missed by the pentagon, doesn't matter. All six vertices will have two points of intersection for both the septagon and the octagon. So you're going to get plus twice the number of vertices, two times six is 12, you will get 12 times two, one for the septagon, one for the octagon. So in other words, I'll get 12 of them here and 12 of them here, that's why it's two times 12. Lastly, the seven-sided figure, the septagon, will hit the octagon 14 times because it will cross over seven of its sides, and you're going to add 14. 24 and 14 is 38, plus 30 gives you 68. Really fun, kind of. I mean, you probably, if you didn't come up with this solution method, you might not have had as much fun with it as I did, but after the earlier problems, which I did not, Definitely did not enjoy all of them. This, I guess, I really liked, and I like how it's kind of neat. It's not dependent. You can get it pretty quick if you, I guess, uh, think of it in the way that I did. Um, that's it for this problem. Let's do another one.